Hello and welcome to yet another video by New York Stilo. And on my last video that I released, I talked about uh, releasing a video on UV sterilizers. And since then, I've gotten quite a few requests to kind of talk about uh, egg disease. There's about five or six of you guys, in my subscribers, that are currently having a battle with egg. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to cover both uh, subjects as well as we're going to cover the different types of, of treatments that you can go about, you know, uh, battling ick in your uh, systems. We're going to talk about uh, dropping the uh, salinity. We're going to talk a little bit about raising the water temperature, medication, quarantine tanks, and of course, we're going to cover uh, UV sterilizers here. Now, you're looking at this, you know, if you're a beginner, don't shy away from uh, using a UV sterilizer. It is actually quite simple to use and set up. I extremely easy, and we're going to get into that. But before we go into the different treatments, it it's important to understand that um, in my 90-gallon system, let me just use this as an example, it lives in my system, and yet my fish do not get it, and I use no medication, no UV sterilizers, none of the such. And the reason for that is because the fish in nature live where there are billions and trillions of these free-floating parasites looking for a host to find, to attach itself to, you know. And if the fish is healthy in nature, of course it's not going to get this parasite, you know. It, it may live in its body, but it's not attacking it and cannot uh, break through that uh, slime coat. It's important to know that uh, that slime coat that a fish has, you know when you grab your the fish in your hands and it slips out, that, that slime coat is actually a protective coat, you know, that prevents these parasites from taking a hold of the fish. But, you know, uh, it is, comes into our home systems via nature. You know, it, it's attached to the fish in nature and then unfortunately the fish goes through hell when it gets shipped to the retailer, then to the live fish store, and then eventually to our homes. And, you know, during this transition, the fish is extremely stressed out and loses that slime coat and is extremely susceptible to getting ick. Now, um, it's important to understand a little bit about the parasite itself. What I can tell you is, is that it has a very short lifespan. I believe it's like five to seven days, depending on the temperature of the water. If the water is warmer, uh, it'll actually speed up the metabolism of the parasite and, and cause it to fall off after a week. So considering that it has a very short lifespan, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, if it has a, a short lifespan, then I can easily eradicate it. But the answer is no, because what happens is that the fish attaches, the parasite attaches to the fish and it's actually unseen to the naked eye. You can't really see it unless you look at it under a microscope. So once the parasite attaches to the fish's body, it starts to suck on its blood if, it, if the slime coat is not there. And it, it also sucks up on some of the tissue in the body and some of the cells. And what happens is that the fish starts displaying signs that it feels uncomfortable and begins scratching itself in the rock. So that's the number one warning sign. If you see your fish scratching in the rock, you, know, you really got to take a look at your reef. So after a few days, not even, after 24 hours or so, the next day, you're going to start seeing these white spots. Now, the white spots are not the parasite themselves. The white spot are actually, since the parasite is sucking on the blood, of the fish and you know it creates a cyst that looks white to us you know which is the reason why it is also known as white spot disease so you know after a week of sucking up on the fish and whatnot you know the parasite falls off the body of the fish lands in the gravel and this is where the, the trouble happens you know it releases um thousands of these uh, free-floating parasites constantly swimming around the tank looking for a host and this is this is you got a problem because once you introduce ache into your system it is very difficult to get rid of it 
Now, there is one way to completely get rid of uh, ache in your system, and, and that's via medication. There's actually two ways. We're going to talk about that briefly. Medication. Now, and that brings me to another point that I want to touch on. Ache in itself is a number one money maker when it comes to um, live fish stores. You walk into a live fish store, you buy yourself some fish, you bring it home, bam, you have ick. And that's how it works. And then you have to go back to the live fish store and look for a way and buy some medication or a UV light or the such. So, um, the, li the local live fish store, I'm not telling you that all of them are like that, but the majority of them will sell you a fish that has ick in it. You know, and if you actually have a successful system where you never got ick in your life, during the time that you've been in this hobby, then I suggest you go back and thank that local live fish store for properly quarantining their fish before they sell it to you. So, you know, one sure way, there's two sure ways for you to eradicate parasite, uh, these parasites from your system. Number one, medication. Do I believe in the medication? I'm not going to say do I believe because the medication absolutely works. Do I use the medication no i would never medicate my system because not only does it destroy the parasite but it also destroys the entire biological process in your system in other words it's going to kill uh, uh beneficial bacteria all that bacteria that's converting the uh undissolved organics into ammonia nitrite and nitrate are going to be gone so you're destru you're you're, you're going to kill your live rock some of this medication is going to attach to the live rock. All hell is going to break loose, let alone if you have corals in your system. So you definitely want to stay away from medication unless you're going to be using a quarantine tank. And we're going to get into a quarantine tank, which there is a, a big misconception with the use of quarantine tanks. But we're talking right now about two sure ways to get rid of these parasites. Number one, medication. Number two, completely removing all of the fish from your tank for approximately three to six months. I would say four to six months because in the end, uh, the parasite needs a host to live off of the fish. And if there's no fish, it is going to die. Now, um, both of these, these methods, I would not recommend you to do. Medication, of course, I covered that. And not having fish in your system, how fun is it to just look at a system with just live rock? So take that into consideration. But when it comes to medicating the fish, and we're going to jump into quarantine tanks. Now, a quarantine tank, big misconception when it comes to this. And the reason for that is because many people commit the mistake that they, they set up their saltwater system, their reef, and then once they introduce the fish with the parasites and they got the problem, that's when they decide that they want to go out and buy a quarantine tank. That is the worst thing that you can do, guys. Seriously, uh, take this, you know, um, take this into consideration because what, what happens is that you can certainly go about and, and purchase a quarantine tank, take out the sick fish, treat it, but once you introduce it back into the system, it's gonna get ache again. So absolutely, quarantine tanks work 100%, but in order for it to work effectively, you have to set up a quarantine tank before you set up your system or during the time where you set up your system. So while the, the system is going through the biological process, you're, you've already bought the fish and, and, it's, and it's, it, you know, it's being quarantined in the system and, and being treated with medication. So it gets up to the point that you introduce the system, the, the fish into your system and you're not going to have ick in that system. So if you have a system that is already set up been through everything, the biological process, you have fish in there, and you have ick in your system, don't go out there and purchase a quarantine tank because in the end, it's not going to do much for you. A quarantine tank must be set up before you set up the main system. Now, we've covered uh, medications, uh, being fishless in your tank and, and quarantine tanks. Now, another way that you can actually go ahead and uh, try to fight off the disease, and I'm going to say try to, because in the end you're not going to be successful, is by lowering the salinity of your tank anywhere between, uh, I would say 1010 to 1019, and raising the temperature of the tank 
to above 80 degrees, anywhere around 80 to 82 degrees. The problem with using this method, which works, it speeds up the cycle of the parasite, eventually releases itself, and the parasite just does not let, like that low salinity, you know, it, 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 you're going to be able to be successful momentarily. You're not going to really be able to completely eradicate the parasite. And, you know, why, I, I don't see the cause of you trying to um, lower the salinity, raise the water temperature. All of this is actually affecting your fish as well. And what we're trying to achieve here, we're trying to get your fish to acclimate properly to your water chemistry. So by changing all of this, it's just making your fish even more stressed out, making them have a weaker immune system and more susceptible to ick. So I really completely rule out that I've, I've gotten a couple of people that actually came at me and, and, and suggested, well, do you think I should do that? Don't, honestly. Or if you want to do that, you can go ahead and do that. But you're really asking the wrong person about this. So my phone is ringing, guys. Unbelievable. But I'm going to keep on because my videos are raw and edited. <laughs> so, and actually stop ringing. So, where was I? We were talking about, oh God, I don't even know. Oh, we were talking about the drop in temperature and, uh, the, the, I mean, the raise in temperature and the drop in salinity. Completely stay away from that, guys. Honestly, it's not worth it. You know, in the end, you're still going to have the parasite and it can come back and take a grab hold into the fish. So, that leaves us with a UV sterilizer here. An awesome piece of equipment, guys. Highly recommend you to get this. The one that you see back here is a 25-watt unit. And uh, the one that you see, the bulb that you see here is the 8-watt and, of course, the 8-watt unit here. And there is one warning that I'm going to give you. Never, ever, if you're going to set up a UV light, never, ever turn on the UV light and look at it with your own eyes. It will literally blind you. I mean, it, it, UV is harmful to us humans as much as it is to the parasites and everything else. So this 25 watt system here is extremely simple to set up. It actually has the transformer which gives it electricity and here is a clear area that screws into the body of the, skin, of the um, UV light that uh, allows you to just have a glimpse of whether or not the system is working and the UV light is on. So you can definitely look at the UV light through this blue clear housing, but definitely do not look at the blue, uh, the UV light, you know, without any protection. So it's very simple to use. Some units come with a self-cleaning head and the self-cleaning head, what it does is that it cleans the quartz sleeve inside of the UV light. Now, inside of this particular unit here is a quartz sleeve that covers the bulb so that the bulb does not come in contact with the water. So, you know, it's important to actually, you know, every once in a while, uh, you know, take your UV unit apart and just uh, add some vinegar and the such to kind of clean off that quartz sleeve because some uh, calcium deposits form in there and eventually it it blocks off the the UV unit now uh, this particular company that makes this uh, UV light uh, the, the the bulb itself aqua aqua UV sterilizers they they got really good bulbs guys it doesn't really matter the unit or the manufacturer of the unit what really comes into play is the bulb and uh, uh, aqua UV claims that their bulbs last a year and I can tell you that it's worked for me you know and I've used this UV unit uh, before, never really because I had an ick problem, but sort of to try to control algae, which brings me into another thing that a UV unit can do for you. It can actually kill free-floating algae. And there is a common misconception about UV units that if you have a reef and you're trying to feed your corals that phytoplankton, uh, many people tell you don't get a UV sterilizer because it's just going to kill everything that passes through the UV unit. I, I don't believe that to be true, you know, considering that, you know, you, you have lighting in your main system for 20, not 24 hours, for 12 hours during the day, 10 to 12 hours, 
you know the same way that a uv unit is not going to completely eradicate the ick infestation and that's important for me to tell you guys a uv unit will only help remove the parasites uh you know and control it it won't completely remove it from your system is the same way that it will only help remove free floating algae uh from your system it's not going to completely remove it so anything that passes through a uv unit is basically going to be exposed to the uv light and is going to be killed the uv light is going to destroy the dna within the the the, the bacteria the parasite or the uh, free floating algae and is going to prevent it from being able to reproduce because um, you know once the DNA is destroyed there is no way for it to be able to reproduce so quickly it's important that you have the correct water flow flowing through the UV unit the slower the water flow the more the contact time the bigger the UV unit the more the contact time in order for it to properly kill and eradicate this highly common and uh, pesky uh, parasite disease so if you were to come up to me quickly and ask me what is the best way for you to eradicate uh, a, an ick infestation in my system i'm going to tell you look there's two things that you should get number one you should get a pair of cleaner shrimps the cleaner shrimps are actually going to take the parasite off the body of the fish before it drops and reproduces and also get yourself a UV sterilizer. And all of this is only going to control the parasite while your fish is properly acclimating to your system. Once the fish is well acclimated to the system and calls it its home and you feed it properly, it is going to be more stronger. It is going to have that protective slime coat. And like in my 90 gallon system, you will not get uh, ache in your system. So I hope that this video has been informational for you guys. And if you have any other questions about it, please feel free to hit me up. You know, I'm more than glad to help anyone in this hobby. And for the purpose of these animals faring well in your systems, I'll be more than glad to answer your questions. If anything, do some research online. Help me help you. If you like my videos, uh, give it a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs down if you don't. I accept whatever you guys uh, just rate my videos. And thank you for watching, guys. Seriously, many more videos to come. Stay tuned. And this is New York Stilo signing out. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Peace.